man, I tell you, nothing better than a sunset, the cool, fresh breeze over the water, and playing some lemmings. Hello, fellow Amiga users. I'm Bill. I'm Anthony. And we are the, the Guru, Guru Meditation. Meditation. We're standing on the shoreline of the gorgeous Hudson River with the Tappan Zee Bridge in the background at sunset, and I could not imagine using my Amiga in a more beautiful location back in the day. No, basically back in the day you were stuck at home, you were in your bedroom, your playroom, your living room. You were tethered to that power outlet and that 1084 monitor. But not anymore. You can use your Amiga just about anywhere thanks to the power of emulation. So come along with us and we'll show you how it's done. Mm, 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 <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Okay. We're gonna install a few apps from the Google Play Store on the Android tablet. The main one, UAE for all two, is the actual emulator that emulates the Amiga. And we're also going to download Amiga Forever Essentials, which installs a few ROM files onto your Android device that allows the emulator to run. Right. And this is because these are still under copyright. Now, Cloanto has the rights to sell you those files. And this is a popular package. This is Amiga Forever. It's 2008 edition, but the current one, I think, is 2014. This gives you a full emulation you can install on a Windows machine that's ready to go. But the beauty of it is it contains all of those files and you can copy them from this, if you already have it, onto your Android tablet and use those. That's my personal favorite way to do it because I know exactly where I put the files. But if you don't have the Amiga Forever, there's an app that you can download from the Google Play Store. It costs 99 cents and it gives you a variety of Kickstart ROMs and it even gives you a workbench. Here it is, Amiga Forever by Clianto. I don't have to pay the 99 cents because obviously I already bought it. Install. It wants access to my photos and media files. And that access is because it has to place the ROMs onto your device. Now when you run it, it looks like nothing happens because all this app is is the ROM files and the workbench disk. So if you want to see where it installed the files, you can say show installed Amiga ROM and OS files and it shows you the directory structure where it installed it. And where it placed these is in a directory that on many Android operating systems is considered a protected folder. Exactly. When you start the UAE for All 2 emulator, it does a scan of your device and it looks for these install files, but it can't see them in the Android directory. So I'm going to copy the files out of the Android directory and put them in the root folder of my external SD card because it's easy for me to point it there when we go into the emulator. Using my files. Right. What you have to remember is, of course, Different tablets from different companies are going to look a little different. They may name some of the applications a little different, but the concept's still the same. So device storage, Android folder, data, and it's in com, Clianto, Amiga Forever Essentials. And there's the files directory I want to copy. So, copy the folder to the clipboard. Now I'm going to go to the root directory on my SD memory card and paste it there. One item copied. Perfect. Now it's time to download the emulator. Oh, you mean we're still not playing Lemmings? Still not playing Lemmings. Got to go back to the Google Play Store. We're going to do a search for UAE for All 2, which is the name of the emulator that I like. Already in the browser history, just going to click on it there. There it is, UAE for All 2. This app is actually free, which is unbelievable, because <laughs> you get an amazing emulator. Install. It needs access to my files, except. Yeah, and both of these apps need access to your files, and that's basically to allow them to actually place or read files that are on your system, which would be the ROMs, ADFs, and anything else that you have. Open it up. And here we are in the emulator. Now, the emulator is pretty well laid out. There's all these tabs at the top that allow you to configure it. Uh, so the first place I want to go is this miscellaneous tab. And I'm going to tell it where my kickstart ROM file is. Yeah, and this will basically be that folder that you placed them in when you did the copy. So I'm going to browse for the ROM. The file browser that's built into this app is a little cumbersome to use. 
Right. One thing you have to keep in mind is you can't scroll through the list like you can in a lot of things on an Android just by swiping. You have to use this almost like you're using an old Amiga and use the scroll bar on the right here to scroll up and down the list to get to what you want if it's below. So I'm going to use the scroll bar, scroll down to external SD card, and I'm going to look for the files folder, which is right there at the bottom, the files, click, installed a couple of folders here, an ADF folder where the Workbench ADF is, and a ROM folder where the Kickstart is. Amiga OS 1.3, okay, excellent, we found the Kickstart file. Um, I'll just take you through the other tabs here for your initial setup of the uh, emulator. The floppy drive tab is where you can insert your ADF files, simulating DFO, DF1, DF2, DF3. The hard drive tab lets you um, select an HDF file, which is a hard drive file. It's an emulated hard drive on the Amiga. We're not going to do that today because we're just emulating a simple 500. You could also use a directory, and people who've used WinUAE know about this, where WinUAE you could actually use a directory in the Windows file system as almost an Amiga hard drive. And this can do a similar thing on an Android tablet. Miscellaneous tab is where we were before. We picked our ROM file. You can set up the type of Amiga you want. You can emulate 68,000 chips, 68 20 chip, OCS, ECS, AGA, we're doing a 500, so just going to use the stock settings. Yeah, a lot of these settings are going to depend on the speed of your tablet. You know, if your tablet's not as fast, you're, going to you're not going to be able to emulate necessarily an AGA machine running at a high CPU speed. Now this next tab is pretty important. It's uh, the display and sound tab. When I first started up this app and I loaded up Workbench, the quality of the text was really poor. It was hard to read. It was jaggy. And the trick is to play with these settings for the width and height, which is the resolution that the emulator runs in. And uh, the one I like is 640 by 216. It looks great on this particular tablet, but your tablet might be different. So you're going to want to play with these settings until you get some nice sharp text. It's amazing that we've gone from machines with interlace flicker, and now it upsets us when the font's not crisp. <laughs> So there's some other settings here. I'm going to leave most of them at default, except for the refresh rate, which I'm going to switch over to 60 hertz. Since we are in the USA, we use NTSC, which stands for never the same color. There's some other tabs here. Save states is a really cool one that lets you um, save different states of the Amiga, but we're not going to go into a lot of detail on this right now because we just want to get the emulator up and running. Uh, control, this is an important tab. The way I like to set it up is I use this control fig number one. Then uh, for joystick, I use port 1 because I saved the port 0 for the mouse. Uh, auto fire rate, leave it default. Mouse speed, I like to use at 0.5, so I get a little more precision on it, but sometimes it's hard to click on the icons. Uh, everything else I'm going to leave at the default settings. So on the, the custom tab, this is a really important one for your first uh, setup. I'm going to turn custom control on. Uh, there's a D-pad, which is like a virtual joystick that a lot of tablets use, and you can say whether you want to use it uh, to emulate the joystick or the mouse. I'm going to use it to emulate the joystick. Each of these letters here, A, B, X, Y, L, and R, represent a, a virtual button that's going to be on the screen when we boot up the app. So what I like to do personally is for letter B, I like to make that the joystick fire button. Letter X, I like to make the mouse right button. And letter Y, I like to make the mouse left button. We're all set there. The on-screen tab lets you choose like what you see on screen when you are running the emulator. It's going to make a lot more sense when we actually boot it up. So this is what the actual on-screen controls will look like. And you can turn them on and off by that on-screen control in the top left. You can turn on and off individual buttons just by hitting the check. So if you don't need four buttons, you can turn off one, two, or more of them. If you don't need the D-pad, you can turn that off and not have it sitting on your screen. I'm going to go back and I used button B, X, and Y. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn off button A because I didn't assign anything to it. So I'm going to have B, X, and Y. I'm going to leave the on-screen control checked, text input checked, which pulls up a keyboard. And I'm going to leave the D-pad on for now, but I can always bounce back and turn it off if I don't need it. All right, we got a nice basic configuration of the emulator. Now it's time just to pop in a floppy disk. All right, why don't we start with Workbench just so we can see it running like a basic Amiga you might have turned on back in 1987. Sounds great. Let's go to the floppy drive tab, hit DF0, and we will go 
to the files folder, ADF folder, and here it is, Amiga OS Workbench 1.34. Put it in the DFO slot. I'm going to actually save this configuration so we don't have to go through that again. General config file saved. And we are going to start. And it's booting up. Now, one thing you can really see on this screen is, are these um, fantastic controls. Um, <laughs> they could have decided to use buttons. Instead, they, they went for a tribal vibe. Yeah, it, and I think part of this was just to make them sort of not stand out because they do cover up parts of the screen. But I think uh, it's a little hard to know what they do. Well, I'll tell you what they do. <laughs> um, the one in the upper left corner here will bring up our virtual keyboard, which is really handy. Uh, this circular spiral thing is the D-pad. Yeah, and you actually see when he has his finger in there where he's touching in that D-pad. The star button up here in the upper left is our left mouse button. The one next to it is our right mouse button. And then the button down here by itself is our fire button. And that's the cluster in this bottom right he was talking about. And I'm moving the mouse just by moving my finger on the screen. Yeah. Now the issue, of course, is it doesn't move the mouse by placing it where your fingertip is. So what you do is you basically just put your finger on the screen and slide it, and the mouse moves at a different rate to where it ends up when you pick your finger up. It's definitely a little tricky when you first boot it up, but uh, you get used to it. And an uh, interesting thing here is uh, I'm not going to use the D-pad because I'm not going to use a joystick for Workbench. So a nice feature is you can just hop right back to your configuration screen. I'm going to go back to the on-screen tab, and I'm going to turn off the D-pad and go on Resume. Start with Reboot the Machine. So I'm just going to click Resume. And look, no more D-pad. So I can use my left finger a lot easier to move the mouse pointer around. And I can go click on my Workbench disk. Click, click, and there it is. Let's, uh, let's open up a shell so we can use the virtual keyboard. Overall, it's a really nice emulation, and I'm loving looking at the workbench screen. Everything's clean and crisp and sharp. I'm going to click this button in the upper left. Here's my virtual keyboard. I'll just do a, a DIR. Works like a charm. Right. Of course, to play a game, instead of using the workbench ADF file, you'll use the disk file of whatever game that you're trying to play. I got a hunch you want to play some Lemmings. You know it. <laughs> well, let's do it. Let's just go right back. Go back to the floppy drive tab. I'm going to hit the eject button, which is going to take out the workbench ADF disk. Click on a DFO. I'm going to navigate back to the root directory here. I have uh, an ADF folder. And here I have Lemmings Disk 1 and Disk 2. So I'm going to put Lemmings Disk 1 in the DF0. I'm going to put Lemmings Disk 2 in the DF1. And this time I'm going to hit Start because it's going to reboot the machine. So let's talk about some of the other emulation systems while this is booting. You have Windows, which does a very similar thing. and actually even emulates that floppy drive sound while it's loading your game. Well, I believe in Windows, you're talking about Amiga Forever, which uses uh, WinUAE. Correct. Uh, one I like to use, because I'm a bit of a Mac guy, is called FSUAE. doesn't seem to be quite as powerful as WinUAE, but it's excellent. I can play all the games. I can use PageStream. I can use Dpain. It works really well, and it's really simple to use. Right. And the good thing about, about a lot of these is each of the emulators takes from each other, because a lot of it's open source. So what's in WinUAE right now can move over to the Mac emulator eventually, and as Android tablets get faster and better, it could eventually end up on the Android tablets as well. For now, we're uh, using UAE for all too, and it's definitely not as advanced as the WinUAE or the FSUAE, but hey, it's not bad. Like, we got Workbench up, uh, we can, I've successfully loaded up D-Paint, we got Lemmings up and running, so yeah. it's pretty cool. I successfully lost at a game of Lemmings by the river, so hey, you can't beat it. Now you have everything you need to play Lemmings, or whatever Amiga game you want to play, down by the river. I don't know, I might go down there, load up D-Paint, and get a little artistic, and paint the Palisades with my finger. Just don't <laughs> use this finger. <laughs> <laughs>